extra minutes. When it was first raised that we were going to look at the 30th anniversary of the Milpera Bikie Massacre, I must admit I found it a bit overwhelming. I mean, this is an incredibly huge story that's seared in Australian criminal history. Um, look, I was 13 and 14 at the time too. I know what happened at Milpera, but I didn't know the, the intricate details of it. Of course, there are many people that lived through that day. It shocked Australia. It was put to me by some of the people when we were interviewing the story that in fact, in some way, Australia lost its innocence that day, which sounds like a big statement. But it, it did, it shocked all of us. Here were two biker gangs that out in the open, in the middle of a public swap meet, essentially a family day on Father's Day, went to war. And they were both armed like private militias. It was chaos and it was absolute carnage. And when one shot was fired, it was on. I think a very large component of this story is our fascination, not our love, mind you, but our fascination with bikies. These are the outlaws, the one percenters. They live outside the mainstream. Why do they do it? What are they all about? The bikies of that time, the Comancheros and the Banditos, these two rival gangs, it was very tribal. There's something very old fashioned in the way that these two biker gangs went to war. It's not admirable, mind you. There's nothing honourable about what went on here. But why did they do it? There's one central figure in all of this, and it is Jock Ross, the founder and the leader of the Comancheros. He is an absolutely formidable character. He has lost none of his, his hardness. He's a hard man, I say it in the very first line of the script. Not easy to talk to, he gives it right back to you. Um, and we had to ask him some pretty straight direct questions. He's heard it all before. Uh, we were very upfront with him about the, the entire story and how it was gonna shape up. They weren't easy interviews. And we took him back to the scene. It's the first time he's been back there in 30 years and he was incredibly uncomfortable as you'd expect but I wanted him to try and absorb what happened that day and tell me firsthand what happened on that day. Jock, the story goes that as you've got your machete, you've come through the car park yelling, kill them all. Nah, bullshit, crap. You never said that? No. Didn't say a word. Mm. Didn't say nothing. Jock Ross storms across the car park, wielding his trademark machete. I just kept it aside and I just walked down. I came across the first thing I knew on that. I pointed at him as I was walking towards him, brought it across my shoulder. He just turned and he, he went, he left. If I could have two more steps, I could have cut him down, but let him go. And I'll get hit. And I remember going down. I remember getting back up and I got hit again. There is one thing that will stick with me in this story, and as soon as Jock Ross said it to me, uh, it, it hit me between the eyes. The Milpera massacre has been analysed for years. It was one of the longest trials in Australian history, the longest in New South Wales. Incredible amount of charges, all these biker gangs, seven dead, an innocent girl, shocked Australia. But what was it all about? And when I put that question to Jock, he hit me with his response. Nothing really. That is extraordinary. 